May 24. Numbers 33. Psalm 78, 1 through 39. Isaiah 25. 1 John 3. The opening few verses of Psalm 78 initially elicit a little puzzlement. Asaph invites his readers, and if this is sung, his hearers, to hear his teaching, to listen to the words of his mouth. Verse 1. Then he announces, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter hidden things, things from of old. Verse 2. Anticipation builds. It sounds as if we shall hear brand new things that have been hidden before Asaph came on the scene. Then he further describes these hidden things, things from of old. They are what we have heard and known, what our fathers have told us. Verse 3. So is he embarking on some new revelation previously hidden? Or is he simply reviewing the common heritage of the Israelites? And why add at this point that at least part of his purpose is to disclose these things to the new generation that is coming along? Verse 4. Three observations. First, the word rendered parables has a wide range of meaning. It can refer to narrative parables, wisdom sayings, aphorisms, and several other forms. Here, Asaph seems to mean no more than that he will say what he has to say in the poetic structures and wise comparisons that characterize this psalm. Second, the content of this psalm is both old, what we have heard and known, what our fathers have told us, and new, hidden things. This psalm is one of a group of historical psalms, that is, psalms that review some of the experiences of the people of God with their God. For most of its length, its chief focus is the Exodus and the events that surrounded it, including the plagues, the crossing of the Red Sea, the provision of manna, and so forth. The psalm brings us down to the reign of David, which incidentally shows that Asaph himself lived in David's day or later. Yet this psalm is not a mere review of the bare facts of that history. The recital is designed to draw certain lessons from that history, lessons that might be missed if attention were not drawn to them. These lessons include the sorry patterns of rebellion, God's self-restraint in His rising anger, His graciousness in saving them again and again, and more. These lessons are hidden in the bare text, but they are there, and Asaph brings them out. Third, Asaph understands, one, that deep knowledge of Scripture and of the ways of God means more than knowing facts, but also grasping the unfolding patterns to see what God is doing. Two, that at any time, the covenant people of God are never more than one generation from extinction, so it's utterly vital to pass on this accumulating insight to the next generation.